Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in Microsoft's new Surface Go 2, and today we are gonna be putting it against Apple's 10.2 inch iPad with Logitech's new keyboard case that includes a trackpad and seeing which one of these deserves your money. We're not only gonna be talking about things like performance of the CPU and graphics, the displays, the cameras, keyboards and trackpads, we're also gonna be talking about things like battery life, software support, actual real world performance and much more. Now when you buy either one of these devices, they actually come basically in just a tablet form. So let me go ahead and take off all these extra accessories and let's start out just talking about the differences. Holding these in the hand, the iPad is a little bit more comfortable because it is thinner, but is actually slightly larger than the Surface Go 2. It's a little bit wider and slightly taller, even though it does have a 10.2 inch display compared to this one's 10.5 uh, inch display. The Surface has a three by two aspect ratio, whereas the iPad has a four by three, meaning that you actually get a little bit more vertical space if you're using them sideways because of the aspect ratio but overall the screen size is fairly similar now the iPad does have these massive bezels on the sides or forehead and chin if you're gonna be holding it vertically. It does feature Apple's Touch ID, so they need space for that, whereas the Surface is a lot more even overall. Surprisingly, we don't have that big of a difference in weight. You can't really tell in the hand. And one reason why the Surface is thicker is because it has a built-in kickstand that is very well made. The iPad doesn't have one of these, so if you do wanna set it up like this, be able to watch a movie or something else, you're gonna to have to use that keyboard case, whereas with the Surface, it's all built in and it works really well. On the bottoms, we have our proprietary connectors for the keyboards. And then on the right hand side, the iPad just has a lightning port, whereas the Surface has a USB type C port, which is great and Microsoft's proprietary Surface connector, which you can use for charging with a dedicated, uh, included 28 watt charger for fast charging. And you can also uh, plug in Microsoft's proprietary different accessories. Both have headphone jacks, which is great. The iPad has it on the other side. And then the Surface has one extra bonus connection, which I'm so glad about. If we pop open this little cover, we actually have a micro SD card slot so you can expand the storage really easily and cheaply, which the iPad doesn't offer. Another really cool thing about the Surface is that we have dual stereo front firing speakers, whereas the iPad just has the one mono speaker on the bottom. And then if you're holding it horizontally or if it's in the keyboard case, it is facing the right hand side, which kind of sucks. Let's go ahead and do a speaker test. You guys put on your best pair of headphones. All right, I did not expect that. I expected the iPad to get whooped in this test, but that didn't happen. Did you guys tell the difference there? Uh, the Surface Go 2 doesn't sound bad. The speaker quality is good, but it is so quiet. I actually thought there was something wrong. I triple checked the volumes. I checked the window settings. Everything's turned up all the way. The iPad, you definitely could tell that the sound is coming from this direction if you're holding it like this, if you're watching a movie, music video. If you go vertically, which the video experience is much worse, audio is more, much more balanced between both ears, but it is so much louder on average, probably about eight to nine decibels louder. That is a massive difference. Both of these have dual cameras. You have a camera on the front and a camera on the back. The ones on the back, I don't recommend people taking pictures with them, but they are both eight megapixel and they are useful for doing things like scanning documents. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture and you guys let me know which one looks better to you guys as far as the image quality. Quality. Now for the front facing cameras, the iPad has a 1.2 megapixel camera compared to five megapixel on the surface. Now let's go ahead and do a webcam and a microphone test. 
This is the webcam and microphone quality that you could expect with the Surface Go 2. Microsoft is using a 1080p webcam and dual front-facing microphones that they say are studio quality. And this is the video and microphone quality that you can expect from the 10.2 inch iPad. It is a 720p webcam or front-facing camera. And as you guys could tell, it is cropped in a lot more than the Surface. And the other thing is, if I'm not directly staring at the camera, which is right here on the left-hand side, it's also lower down. If I look at the screen, it looks so awkward. It looks like you're not paying attention to whoever you're talking to. So if you're trying to take notes and do, say, a Zoom call, it just looks really weird. And it's also a bottom angle. And now let's talk about the keyboards and the trackpads. Trackpads are brand new for iPad OS. We're glad that Apple added them. And Apple has their magic keyboard for the iPad Pro but those are very expensive and just for the high-end laptops. For the 10.2 inch iPad, this is Logitech's keyboard case, which we do have a review on, and it looks surprisingly similar to Microsoft's, which has been around for a long time. Now, this keyboard case actually works surprisingly well. The keys themselves are actually slightly larger than the ones on um, the Surface Go. They're slightly larger. They feel pretty decent overall. You could definitely use it for typing. Um, not a lot of complaints there. We do have extra function keys on top. And then towards the bottom, we have this trackpad. And it also works surprisingly well with no lag at all because we are using that smart connector. It is a diving board design, so it's harder to click up top. Microsoft's is also pretty much the same design, very similar size. It does feel a little bit nicer when you're clicking, or you can also use tap to click on both both of them. Now both of the keyboard covers can be easily detached if you don't need them to get them out of the way, but Microsoft's is thinner and lighter, which is nice, and the magnetic connection is a little bit stronger as well. So if I had to choose one of these, I would definitely hand it to Microsoft. They've been making these for a while. Um, and even though I don't like that the keycaps are smaller, once you get used to them, it works just fine. It's a little bit better overall. The Logitech case has a little loop at the top where you can store your Apple Pencil that you have to buy separately. Whereas the Surface Go, it actually just attaches magnetically. To be honest, I don't really like having this loop over here because if you're not going to use the pencil, it's just always just right there. But the benefit is you do have a much more secure fit. You're not going to lose your Apple Pencil compared to with the Microsoft. It is much easier for this to get detached and get lost. With the iPad, obviously it doesn't have the hinge built in like the Surface, so you have to keep this case on it in order to have access to this hinge and that makes it thicker than the surface, but it does give some protection. And then the hinge itself is not as nice. It's a little bit more flimsy. It is not as sturdy as the one that's built into the surface. And now we're gonna compare the screens, but you guys might notice that I have these guys plugged in now. And that is because the iPad died. And unlike the Surface that has that fast charger that can charge up in about an hour, the charger takes about four hours to fully charge. So we're gonna leave these guys plugged in. Now, as far as the resolutions, they are very similar, about 220 pixels per inch. So both are nice and sharp. But the iPad does have an advantage with brightness. Its display is about 500 nits compared to the Surface, which is roughly 350 to 400. And as far as reflectivity, both are about the same. They are fairly reflective. So the extra brightness of the iPad definitely comes in handy. One benefit of the Surface is that the LCD display is actually attached to the glass. It's laminated, so there's no air gap. And that way, when you're drawing or writing, you're seeing that right on top of the glass. It's much nicer. Whereas with the iPad, there is a gap. So sometimes it looks like it's a little bit off from the tip of your um, Apple Pencil. But the Apple Pencil, surprisingly, with the iPad, is a lot more responsive and there's less delay or lag. Whereas with the Surface, pen, you can actually get quite a bit of delay as you guys can see right here. Now the Surface Pen does have a few more features. It has a button up here, a button at the top, and to charge it, there's actually a quadruple A 
It's a very slim battery inside that you need to swap out. With the Apple Pencil, you don't have any buttons or anything like that. It's much more simple. And this has a built-in rechargeable battery where you actually just plug it right into the lightning port. Hopefully it's safe and it'll really quickly recharge. Overall, if you're into writing or drawing, I think you're gonna have a better experience with the iPad, not only because there is less lag and delay, but also because there are so many apps available on the App Store that are inexpensive and really nice. Now it's time to talk about performance, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Before I go into some real world performance differences and some benchmarks, I wanna mention that the Surface Go 2 comes with Windows 10 S, and that is a version that only allows apps from Microsoft Store, and those apps are very, very limited. And that's because they wanna maximize battery life, and they wanna make sure it's secure, and have it run faster, but you're most likely gonna have to get out of that if you wanna be able to compete with app selection with iOS. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out of Windows S mode, because without that, I can't even run some of the apps I need for this video. Luckily, it is very easy. You just hit learn more and then hit get, and it's completely free to get a full Windows license. And there you go, we are out of the S mode, and they wanna know why we got out, because we wanna use the apps that we need. And once you switch out, you can't go back in. So we're running full Windows 10 now. And now we can run our Geekbench 5 test. Let's get started right there. And both of these devices actually have pretty old processors. We have the A10 Fusion in the iPad 10.2 inch. It's an old processor. And we have an Intel Pentium Gold old processor here as well, uh, very, not very fast. We do have four gigs of RAM on the Surface compared to three gigs on the iPad, but iPad OS is much more efficient and it can use that RAM much better than Windows, which is heavier and it needs more resources as you'll see in just a bit. And since the Surface is running Windows, we have to make sure that we change the power settings to full performance or best performance. Typically it's set to balanced, and I just found that it is just way too slow in that balanced mode, and I had to set it to best performance for it to be usable. Interesting, the iPad finished first with the Surface. It's only about 60% done. We have our scores and Wow, as far as single core, the iPad is over 80% faster, and in multi-core, it's about 50% faster with the Surface in the best performance mode, and it's plugged in as well. And I thought this iPad was very, very slow. Now, that only tells part of the story. The iPad is optimized to work as quickly. I've been using the Surface Go 2, and it felt slow, even when I put into best performance mode. That helped, but not enough. Uh, for opening apps and things like that slow and even using the web browser felt kind of sluggish. So uh, right now I'm running browser benches speedometer and that's gonna give us the performance of the web browser, how fast things load, how snappy it is. And wow, that explains it. We have, you know, 19.3 compared to 65, more than three times faster with the iPad. And that's not even that impressive of a score. Just to prove we are in the best performance mode. How about we go ahead and maximize our window? Come on, you could do it. There you go, <laughs> we're maximized. Minimize, let's get moving. All right, there you go. And just to prove that our internet speed is fine, there we go, we're at 100. No issues with internet speed. So that is very unfortunate. And with the Surface Go 2, you do have an option to spend more money and get an M3 processor. And that actually costs you an additional $230. It also gives you faster storage and more storage, basically double storage, double the RAM, and the faster processor. But even then, you can look at the speeds of that higher end M3 processor, and it is just slightly ahead of this iPad. And then you're looking at $630 compared to this iPad, which is 330. And sometimes you could buy as low as 250. We'll leave some links down in the video description for the best deals. Let me show you a couple other real world examples. Let's go ahead and launch Adobe Lightroom. And this is actually the optimized version that was in the Windows Store that works with Windows S. Um, if you had the non-optimized version, say Lightroom Classic, it would be much slower. You guys saw that this launched within a few seconds on this old iPad, new iPad, but using a very old processor. 
Whereas this, I mean, how long did that just take us? 15, 20 seconds or even more? Let's do a couple of very simple adjustments. I have just my temperature here. On the iPad, this is instant. As, as I'm sliding, I see exactly what I'm adjusting to. I can fine tune, get the exact right setting. And here, let's go ahead and adjust this. Come on. You guys can see it adjusts every once in a while. And it's harder to dial in what you want because as you're sliding, it's not keeping up unless you're gonna go incredibly, incredibly slow. Let's go ahead and undo that. And let's do a little bit of a pinch to zoom. You guys see it's lagging up here. All right. And then check this out on the iPad. Perfectly smooth. And keep in mind, these are both optimized for the systems. There's a massive difference in performance. And this is just a 12 megapixel JPEG image. It's not a 24 megapixel from an actual camera. It's not a raw image that you might wanna edit. Those kind of images would perform way worse than the image that I have opened here. And now let's go ahead and run Geekbench 5's graphics test. And here we go. We have 4,000 for the Surface Go 2 and 2,700 for the iPad. So the iPad actually loses here, but it, once again, it comes back to optimization. Lightroom does use graphics and we saw the performance difference there. And if you're somebody that's gonna to wanna to play some games, you definitely want the iPad because the App Store has a ton of great games, low cost, free games that are optimized. And now let's talk about prices. I have about $600 invested right here in this Surface package, $400 for the Surface, $100 for the keyboard case with the cheaper materials, another $100 for the pen. Now with the iPad, I have $500 invested here. So the iPad is actually 250 bucks. That's the best sales you can get. Or originally it's 330. Keyboard case costs more, it's 150. So that makes it a $400 package, $100 more for the Apple Pencil. If you bought it for the regular price of 330, um, that brings it up a bit, but still less expensive than the Surface. And that really brings me to our final verdict on which one should you buy? The iPad is great all around. And if you're somebody that is looking for a tablet as number one, and then you might wanna add in the keyboard case if you wanna do a lot of typing and then the trackpad comes in handy, you're gonna have a great time. You're gonna have all the optimized apps, but you're still gonna have certain downsides like the camera being lower and on the left-hand side. Whereas the Surface is more of a Windows computer that can be used as a tablet, even though it is just sold as a tablet. If you're somebody that knows that you need some dedicated apps that will only run on Windows and you're gonna to wanna to use it for web conferencing, say with Zoom, you're gonna be using the keyboard more often and the trackpad more often, and then less often you'll detach it and you'll use it as a tablet. The Surface is gonna be a better choice for you. It is much more of a laptop replacement, but I don't like the speakers and I don't like how slow it is. And if you want it to be usable for all around use, then you need to spend the extra money and it gets a lot more expensive. Because of that, Overall, I think for most people, the iPad makes a lot more sense. Yes, it does have its limitations and downsides, but it has more upsides than that. It works excellent as a tablet. You have access to a crazy amount of great apps that are well optimized. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments section below. If you wanna see the full review after I've had a little bit more time with this, click that circle above. And if you guys wanna see a couple other great videos, we have them right over there. And as always, we have links in the video description. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.